Good morning, you guys. <clears throat> Just when I got myself coffee and donuts. Freshly up, as you can see, I'm not at work. It's been a busy week. Um, there is a lot to talk about. Let me start with the first conversation that comes up when I say there's a lot to talk about. So, we took our first family trip. As you can see, Grey Wolf Lodge. Got donuts on it, but whatever. And it was it was amazing. It was relaxing. It was free time. The kids had a ball. I can't lie. I had a ball too. They had water slides. We I kind of did everything they had to offer and it was a blast. I was a little hesitant about the COVID, but they cases of COVID is like way less than Michigan. So we were safer there than being at home, which is crazy of me. As you can see, my hair, my hair faded back because of the chlorine. It's a little dry. I'm going to wash it though. I have washed it since I've been home, but let me stop picking with my face. That's nasty. Anywho, I have been home, but the chlorine took some of the color out my hair, even though it was a rinse and I needed to get it done over. The slides, pretty epic. The kids talked about it pretty much all week because it was it was fun we all wasn't used to. And it, it, it makes me excited for the next trips we have coming up, even though I'm in the process of trying to leave Michigan, which is the next conversation. But... I can say this from my trip we got to live it up like because i purchased everything with the room as far as eating the beverages the um party packet for lucy because it was her birthday trip everything was on the room so we we go order and go get something to drink or ice cream and they say do you want to pay or you want to put it in the room it's like, I could put it on the room. That's because we weren't used to nothing. But it was a different experience. And I put it on the room and I still had money left on my room. We had $360 to eat and drink with. And we only spent... Well, we had to spend all of it at the end. But during the process of the days, I only probably spent like $80 each day. If that we I had to go back and spend it like spend it all, so it was different. Like we ate really good. We had prime rib, uh, ribeye steak, and we it was a slab, a half a slab of rib. I'm sorry, it was a prime rib. It was a half a slab of ribs. So um, one of us had uh, a rabbi steak. Um, I had the spinach artichoke dip, real spinach artichoke dip. Like, it was thick with real cheese, milk, all of that. And the chips. And then I had macaroni and salmon. It was delicious. They had a, a sit-down restaurant. that it, it was closed, but we could order, like, takeout and take it to our rooms to eat. And it, re it really was amazing. The last day, like, we celebrated Lucy's birthday that Saturday. So, we had cake and ice cream. The cake from there was amazing. Like, it's different because normally you go to McDonald's or something like that. And the cake be decent. You know, you get the little icing or whatever. But that cake was bomb. The ice cream was real ice cream. Like, it's hand scoop. It wasn't a soft serve. Even though they had soft serve available, we had scooped ice cream. Like real strawberries in it. It went through. We could tell. You could tell our bodies wasn't used to that type of eating. With all the lard and manure. Uh, I said manure. <sighs> with all the lard. I ain't gonna say lard. Because they don't use lard here. They use margarine. With the margarine and butter. Because we still use. Some people here still use real butter. It went through our bodies different. Like there's flush throughs. Everybody had to poop. Not to be nasty, but it went through our systems different. We had breakfast, real breakfast, the croissants, the eggs, the pancakes. Like to sit down, like when you go to IHOP. It just was, like I said, it was different because you ain't got the 
the the customer service made you love the trip you ain't have no ghetto attitudes like oh how can i help you like everybody was cheerful like they were bubbly they were me in the morning when i go to work like good morning yes i'm that type of person even though i get up mean i still when i enter out into the world i'll be nice and to see black people because they had a lot of black staff it wasn't it was like a mixture of staff it wasn't just one solid race and then a sprinkle no it was like a mixture of staff we had just as many black people as we did white people out there this was in ohio cincinnati ohio by the way and it was pretty good like the mass coverings was enforced due to they they rates and cases being low only in a pool area you was allowed to not have face covering but you're around a whole bunch of chlorine which you didn't wash away anyway so it definitely was different and yeah the we did have like an alarm scare like a fire alarm scare so we had to evacuate and listen my family my family ain't have it all together like as soon as i heard it go off i thought my son had pulled like an alarm or something so i'm like what did you do because we had a we had a cabin suite i had an upstairs we had three beds i had a room upstairs and then it was two downstairs and we had uh, two bathrooms and he went upstairs to use the bathroom and I guess he was washing his hands when it went off and I thought he did something. So I ran up there to see like, what the hell you do? When I looked around, there was no alarm to pull. So I realized it was real because the lady came on the intercom like, please evacuate as fast as possible. Do not run, do not rush, take your time. And she said, do not panic, do not rush. Take your time to exit the building, do not use the elevators. When I heard that, I was like, Oh, grab my shit. I can't wait. I grabbed everything. When I say everything, I grabbed all. I never unpacked. All my stuff was already in the bag. Just a personal thing of mine. Everything was already in the bag. So I grabbed my bag. I grabbed my son's shoes. Even though we weren't supposed to take that. Like everybody had. When I got into the hallway, I felt bad for grabbing everything. But when I got into the hallway and I seen everybody else had their family and their bags too, I'm like, oh yeah. So we took everything out to the car, even though I was in the process of packing up our stuff to take to the car when it went off. We grabbed everything, packed it in the car, and left it in the car for the morning. But that happened. Outside of that, we had a really, really decent time. So gross, I know. But we had a really, really, really good time. Like, my mom got on the water slides. She enjoyed it. She wasn't just there just for the scenery. She actually participated with us and had fun. Like, it was totally different. Hand sanitizer because I just picked my face. It's a little nasty. But yeah, it was one to remember. It set the tone for the other trips. Like, now I know when I'm booking a trip or family vacation, if we are going to be in a hotel room to book the eating and drinking packet that they have to offer to put book that with the room for everybody so it can be charged to the room because i did not come out of any extra money for that type of thing only thing i paid for was the things we got out the gift shop and the wands for them to play the games that was it oh and the arcade like our extra money on our arcade thing but our packet came with like our arcade card i think it gave them five dollars to play i ordered it with the room they had five dollar no they had ten dollar play and we add, add extra money on there outside of that i didn't really spend much came out of probably i want to say three hundred dollars out of pocket the other 200 went to gas it wasn't really a whole 200 it's like 120 and yeah, I drove my car. My car made it all the way there and all the way back when no, nothing went wrong. It was a real trooper. Like, it was a ball. It, 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 it gave me a different look on what we need to do, what we need to fix. And it put fire in my ass to get the hell out of Michigan. Which is the next conversation. Like, because we had such an amazing trip, even though I know they say, you go on vacation and it's only for you to have fun to get away from everything you have going on but to go on that type of vacation and to come back to all this chaos it lets me know that we really 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 have to get out of michigan we have to take that that leap 
of faith and get the hell on because they're killing us here. Like the COVID, we came back to higher COVID cases than where we was at. Like we were in Ohio, their their max within a week is like two thousand cases. We coming back to nine thousand cases a day. Big difference. Like you can smell the difference in the air, and people don't. I don't know if anybody knows it outside of me. I thought I was tripping into oh, everybody in the car like, ew, what is that smell? Why does it smell like that? Because we're coming from literally fresh air. We, they had trees everywhere. It was clean. Like, our rooms was clean. There was no littering nowhere. They had, like, if you smoked, they had, like, a small little thing for you to put your butts and stuff in. Even if you're not smoking in your car. I didn't smell no weed nowhere on the trip, which is crazy because, of course, I smoked. But I didn't take mine with me because I wanted to genuinely have that fun and remember it. I didn't want to be too high. And I didn't want to always keep going to the car. I wanted to take the time to really be with my kids and enjoy it with them soberly. Next trip is in Miami. Well, I'm Orlando, Florida. It's in Florida, but I don't know if I'm going to be sober. Cause I kind of wanted to be high, cause I didn't eat. But I overall had fun, and I'm thinking like when we do move, even though I want to personally move to Arizona, and that's my biggest thing, moving to Arizona. I'm considering moving where the opportunities are, where I know I would have to start off rough, but I'm not going to be there for long. I looked up jobs in Ohio, and I got like three emails just by looking i went on indeed and i just searched and because i searched and my resume was already posted i got three job offerings like within that day and it's like yeah i really can get out of here but what about housing i don't want to i don't have nobody really in ohio but one cousin and he stay in uh i don't know which one he's i think he's in cleveland and we're trying to move to either columbus or cincinnati which is four hour drive but I'm willing to take that drive. Like, if I'm in Columbus, would I be able to get resources I need so I don't have to be homeless? Like, I could stay in the hotel for a month, but I want to at least be in an apartment sometime within this year. Um, my goal is to say from now until October, at least get, I want to say, four grand under my belt because I do have two trips coming up September and October. And I want to at least have $500 to spend at each trip. So that's $1,000 down, but I want to come back to 3000 So when we leave, we can have a cushion just in case we can't find a place. I'm definitely going to have a job, though. Then I was looking into Atlanta, even though I didn't want to move there because everybody is moving there. Sorry, I keep hitting my face. I didn't want to move to Atlanta because everybody ran there from Detroit and it's like I don't want to be with everybody I don't want to do everything that everybody else is doing but I could see the opportunities there's more opportunities there it's it's easier for you to get back on your feet and up and running because they have so many job offerings and so many houses listed like they have a seven bedroom house for only $250,000 you look at a seven bedroom in Detroit you looking at well over four four hundred thousand it's two nothing like you ain't gonna find no two hundred thousand dollar house with seven bedrooms three bathrooms in no michigan for that price even though it'd be a thousand dollars a month people are paying that here for just like two three bedrooms so i took that in consideration plus the job i want to really push forward to having a photography business and having it here is like so many downers i don't get it takes away your inspiration even though you gotta have your own mind and motivation like if you're not a a strong-minded person you feed off into these people here it's gonna deter you every time you're gonna procrastinate waiting on these people which is what i'm not about to do and i looked up like photography in atlanta and they got so many photography jobs and they don't need like degrees or whatever you just need a camera of your own and a little bit of, like a year experience which i have that because i've been taking pictures since last year I am, um, I'm, put, I'm putting more effort into leaving, so within this time, this will be my grind summer. I'm going to try to hang on to this job to to stack my money and to secure my license so I can go. I give it to June because that's my last court date, 
So by June, I should have everything cleared off. So by, say, August, September, we can start looking into moving. So when we take our trips from Michigan, November, I say December 1st, our Christmas present to ourselves will be a whole new state and whole new living. I was adamant about moving this year. I promised my kids we would move this year. And I'm about to really put forth the effort because I hate promising my kids things that I cannot give them. I don't never try to break a promise to my kids. If I know I cannot do it, I'll tell them I'll see. But if I ever promise them, I make sure it happen. So because I promised them I'm going to make sure 2021 is the year we leave. It may not be Arizona, but we're definitely getting the hell out of here. With that, I was trying to put together a group podcast with me and like four well, three other people, two guys and two girls, as a perspective with relationships, being a parent, and how it is living here, and be real about everything that's going on around us, you feel me? And the podcast has really been on hold because everyone doesn't have their things together, and it seems like I am the only one that's excited about it. Like, I did have two people on board, but it's like, the energy they give me makes me feel like they had communicated with each other and that it's a joke and that only I am excited about this. They're just telling me they're excited because they don't want me to feel no type of way. They don't know how to tell me that this is really just my vision. Like there's no enthusiasm. Like I'm more into it than they are. They give me a, oh, I'm down, but it's like, we, they have so much going on where so many excuses it just lets me believe like they don't want to do it so instead of waiting on others to do what I want to do I know I have a vision of having a group podcast I know it's a it's a it's a good investment and a good idea I just need to find the people that's willing to be as driven as I am to do it it's more than being seen by social media it's like we go through quarantine and everybody on the same boat. I, I want to do a podcast with a group because you get different minds, different variety of conversation, different topics. And it's, it's more interesting to hear more than just one voice. We don't have to have the same opinion. But like-minded people is very scarce and rare. We don't have that. We don't have nobody. Like Everybody's so judgmental that... We need to sit down and just let it all out. Say the things that nobody willing to put on record. Like I said, it's not for attention. It's just to put word out to let other people know if they are out there and they're going through something or they got something going on. There is other people that's going through things too. We, we showing their struggles. We speaking from personal experience of how we view things. Like it's a world of topics we could talk about. I could do it myself, but it's no fun into just doing it by myself. So yeah. That is something I wanted to do. That's something I want to invest in. And I may have to change the people that's in the group, but I'm definitely going to put more energy into that too. With that being said and being a mouthful, I am going to end this video. Because, of course, I have to get my mind right this morning. And I'm going to take this Sunday to spring clean my house again because I made a commitment to do it every Sunday like I used to and that is what I'm going to do so I hope you guys are having a blessed day and you guys are staying positive and I'll talk to you guys later